Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper analysis from the perspective of UPSC examination. Today we have taken up important news and article from the Hindu and Indian Express newspaper dated 1st November 2023, New Delhi edition. And as we know that we have segregated this discussion into two parts, the first part will, will be related to prelims discussion while the second part will contain topics related to mains examination. So from the perspective of prelims examination, we have taken up topic of deep ocean mission because there is an article and as we know after the success of Chandrayaan and Aditya L1, India is targeting to take up its next ambitious product, uh, project that is Samudrayaan. Secondly, we have taken up topic of local government because there is a report which highlights uh, what is already visible and known to all of us. The lacuna and the challenges related to funds, function and functionaries of the local self-government. Thirdly, we have taken up the topic of Akhora Agartala rail link between India and Bangladesh, for which trial run has been done. Fourthly, we have taken up a prelims MCQ based on Houthi tribe, Houthi community. So, because now in the ongoing Israel and Philistine conflict, they have thrown their hat also. For the mains perspective, from the mains perspective, we have first taken up the topic of monsoon. Because there is an article which talks about the variability and concerns related to the monsoon in India. So, as we have already covered the onset and uh, retreat of monsoon and the topic of monsoon break, we are going to cover its special variability, the special distribution and its impact on the Indian society or Indian population in general. Secondly, we have taken up uh, the topic of groundwater depletion as the, there is another important report from United Nations University which is flagging some serious concern regarding the groundwater depletion levels in India. And lastly, we are going to take up topic of energy secur security as there is a report or you may say data uh, which tells us that imports uh, share of Russia has declined and India, uh, again Saudi Arabia is picking up its forte in the import basket of India. So, let us begin our discussion with the prelims discussion. So, as we discussed that this article uh, that we are going to take up today uh, is featured, uh, has featured in the Hindu newspaper science section and it is related to deep ocean mission or commonly known as Samudrayaan. Now, there are several technical specifications related to this project which we have covered and provided you in the PDF. Some cursory view over the details is that this article talks about the Samudrayaan project. Its uh, aim that is to explore the ore and minerals in the deep ocean bed. Further, it, uh, this also uh, talks about the capsule that they are going to or the vehicle that they are going to use in this very project that is Matsya 6000 and now in the name itself, there is very important takeaway that why they have uh, taken up the depth of 600 meter, 6000 meter. So, you can find all the technical details in the PDF given in the description box. So, let's take up the practice MCQ. Now, question says, consider the following statements with reference to Samudrayan mission. Statement 1 says, it is a manned sub submersible which is designed to be sent to a depth of 10 km in the central Indian Ocean. Now, this statement is incorrect as the name suggests, the name of the capsule that is Matsyan 6000 it is designed to be sent to a depth, depth of 6000 meter that is 6 kilometer. Now, second statement says the submarine is indigenously uh, developed by the National Institute of Ocean Technology which is located in Chennai. Now, this is a correct statement. Third statement says the Ministry of Defense is the Implementation Ministry of the Mission. Now, this statement is again incorrect. 
as ministry of earth science and not the ministry of defense is the implementation ministry of the mission so as you had to find the number of statements which are correct your answer should be a that is only one now previously upsc has also asked question based on important missions as question based on mangalyaan which featured in 2022 itself an answer for pyq is c that is 1 and 3 only now the next question that we have taken up today is inspired from a news which featured on page number 9 of the hindu newspaper now a survey highlights that there are serious issues pertaining to the local governance or the local body survey highlighted many things some of them uh, the important takeaway is that as we all know there are issues of funds function and functionaries and state governments are reluctant to you may say decentralize or give the power to the local bodies the survey has found that only the state of assam has given the power to the local govern, uh, governing bodies to levy and collect tax in entire india apart from assam there are just four states namely bihar jharkhand odisha rajasthan and meghalaya only five states which allow them to borrow loan to borrow money from the market without permission other states do not allow local governing bodies to borrow money apart from this they are not even free to hire and hire people and allocate their desired jobs so as you know upsc persistently asking question based on local self government either either based on urban local bodies or panchayati raj institution as you can see in 2016 itself has asked a question based on features of panchayati raj institution so let's take up the practice mcq question says which of the following are the features of the 73rd constitutional amendment act of 1992 you have to identify the correct statements statement 1 says a three tier system of panchayati raj for all states having a population of over 20 lakh now this statement is correct as three tier structure means panchayat at village level block level and the district level so three tier structure in all state having population over 20 lakh so this statement is correct now second statement say reservation of the seats for the scheduled caste the scheduled tribes and the women only now this statement is incorrect pertaining to this word that is only because in this act it has provided capacity or it has allowed the state governments to provide for the reservation for obcs also so this statement is incorrect now third statement says to appoint a state finance commission to make recommendations regarding the financial powers of the panchayat now this statement is correct now the fourth statement says to constitute district district planning committee to prepare a draft development plan for the district as a whole now this statement is again correct so our answer would be b that is 1 3 and 4 because second statement is incorrect so the next news featured on page number 1 of the hindu newspaper and it is related to akhora agartala rail link now this is uh, now there is a trial run of the goods train between the ganga sagar station in bangladesh and nishchinpur in tripura and uh, it was a trial run and news is about that it is to be inaugurated virtually by pm modi and uh, his counterpart that is sheikh hasina today so important projects related to the connectivity regional connectivity in which india is a participant has always been an important theme of upsc examination as it has asked question based on the bbin or kaladan river project and chhabahar project as you can see in 2017 it asked about the significance of the chhabahar port 
So let's take up today's practice MCQ and understand some basic facts related to this project. The question says with reference to Akhora Agartala rail link, consider the following statement. Statement 1 says it is the first rail link between India and Bangladesh. Now this statement is incorrect because it would be sixth rail link. Five rail links are all already existing between India and Bangladesh. Now the second statement says the project is funded by the World Bank. Now this statement is again incorrect because around 400 crore of cost that is going to be incurred is completely funded by the government of India. Now the third statement says, which is, a, which is a general statement and you, you all can understand that it will boost India-Bangladesh trade in agricultural product along with boosting the people-to-people -people ties. So this statement is correct and your answer would be A, that is only one. Now the last question of prelims section is inspired from a news that featured on page number one of Indian Express newspaper. Now in the ongoing uh, Israel-Philistine conflict, Israel, rather say Israel-Hamas conflict, the Iranian-backed Yemen's Houthis have uh, claimed that they have fired missiles and drones at Israeli defense forces. So as you can see in 2016 itself, UPSC uh, asked a very interesting question where it listed some communities which were in news and you were asked to match the correct regions with the given community. So we have taken up this uh, question on a similar line where we have listed three communities that is Houthis, Yazidi and Kurd. Country given are Syria, Yemen and Northwestern Iran. Now, as you know, the, no, uh, the news suggests that Houthis are not based in Syria. They are based in Yemen and they have a very strong hold in the capital city of Sana'a. So, the first, uh, the first matching is incorrect. Now, second says Yazidi and third is Kurd. Now, Yazidi is also of Kurdish is, uh, is also a Kurdish speaking population and uh, their, uh, the area of their spread kinds of overlap with the area of spread of Kurds that is Iraq, Northwestern Iran, Syria, Libya etc. So the second column is also incorrectly matched only the third that is Kurd is correctly matched. So, our answer would be A, that is only one. So, that is the end of our prelims discussion. Uh, details related to all the questions and some factual information related to all the news have been provided in the PDF. You can access them to compile your notes. So, let's move on to the mains discussion. And the first topic that we are going to take up today is based on this news article. Now this news article uh, is about the variability in monsoon. Now author says that what looks normal is not normal because we are claiming that we received normal uh, monsoon this year. But author says no, if you will dig deeper there is a concern. He founds disparity or you may say variability of monsoon at district levels and at regional level also. To which he says there are multiple reasons. Obviously, the climate change and global warming would be the one. But since the monsoon itself is a complex phenomena, you cannot say this, uh, you cannot uh, attribute this variability to one single reason. There are multiple reasons for the variability. So, if you will trace the UPSC syllabus, the important geophysical phenomena, some have been mentioned and for others, uh, the word etc. Be, has been used and uh, water bodies and impact of these geophysical phenomena on them has also been used in your syllabus. 
and if you can relate it to your UPSC mains question, they have asked in 2023 itself that why is the southwest monsoon called Purvaya, that is easterly in Bhojpur region, which lies in western Bihar and bordering uh, area of uh, Uttar Pradesh. How has this directional seasonal wind system influenced the cultural ethos of the region? So what we are going to discuss here is, first we will understand the spatial distribution of the monsoon in India. Then we will understand why there is a distribution, such a distribution that some areas are receiving more rain, rainfall and others are less rainfall. Then we will try to understand what is the variability and how it can impact the overall Indian uh, society or population or lifestyle of Indian citizen. So for that we will also discuss the impact of monsoon on Indian population. Fine. So before moving on. You can also refer to the, uh, this topic is also important from the perspective of uh, prelims examination. You can see in 2017, it has asked a question based on Indian Ocean Dipole and in 2014 itself, it has directly asked the definition of monsoon itself. So now as we know for the answer for the 2014 question is C, that is uh, monsoon climate, seasonal reversal of wind. Try to attempt the 2017 question and let us know your answer in the comment box below. So highlight of this article, we will take up once we have discussed the impact of monsoon on Indian population or Indian society in general. Fine, then you can clearly relate how this variability is important to understand. So without delaying, let us begin our discussion. So, this map represents the general distribution of rainfall, uh, the uh, special distribution of rainfall in India and it has been done in four categories. First one is the high rainfall area, area those receive uh, rainfall more than 200 centimeter at an average. Second is area of uh, medium rainfall. where rainfall ranges between 100 and 200 centimeter and third is area of low rainfall and fourthly area of inadequate rainfall. Through map you can clearly identify that the high rainfall area constitutes a state of mainly constitute the western coast and uh, as we as we uh, know it generally, the Western Ghats. Fine. Further, the high rainfall area is also, you can also demarcate that Northeast India, bearing Manipur and Kachar, falls under high rainfall area. Fine. Then the medium rainfall area, the states, uh, majorly the eastern and southeastern portion of the Deccan, the peninsula, the foothills of the Himalayas that we know as Shivaliks, the eastern coast of Tamil Nadu and rain sh shadow zone of the western Ghats. All these areas fall under the medium rainfall area. For low rainfall area, we know that a state of Gujarat, a large chunk of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, apart from the Delhi, Haryana, Punjab, Western UP, part of Western UP, interior area of the plateau are the zones of low rainfall and Further, if you will move further interior to the plateau area, 
you will find the area of inadequate rainfall where rainfall ranges below 50 cm the average range is below 50 cm apart from the apart from this the western part of rajasthan and ladakh can be categorized as the area of inadequate rainfall so first thing this is clearly visible from the map why this variability now to understand this let us take up this these areas one by one and understand through the monsoonal winds now you all know that you can uh, segregate the monsoonal winds into two parts first is the arabian sea branch and second is the bay of bengal branch now arabian sea branch has three different uh, further branches to it now this arabian sea monsoon first one first one directly hits the western coast now what happens here if you if you know the orographic phenomena of orographic rainfall now suppose this is a mountain now this western ghat creates an obstruction as this mountain is creating to this wind now this monsoon winds that um, which has been marked by red color when comes in contact with this western ghat the winds tend to rise which results into adiabatic cooling of the clouds and which results further results into heavy rainfall on the windward side of the mountain so this western ghat creates an obstruction which leads to the rise of the air which gets cold and condensation happens and rainfall the similar phenomena you can uh, compare it with what happens with the chinook in north america fine it rises on one side from the pacific uh, 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 produces rainfall and on the leeward side that is this side when this air comes down it expands gets warmed up and this area is known as leeward side or rain shadow zone so if you will compare uh, places at the similar latitude like Mangalore, Kohikode, you will find that there is very less rainfall compared to the windward side of the western ghats. So you can clearly see that to some extent this falls under the uh, category of uh, medium rainfall but moving further it turns into area of low rainfall and further to the area of inadequate rainfall altogether now the second branch this is the first branch which uh, struck the western coast directly we are talking about the arabian sea branch the second branch hits the mumbai coast and moves through narmada tapi rift valley and goes on to join the west bengal branch of the monsoon so this is the second branch again orographic rainfall then rift valley the topography of rift valley kind of a moderate rainfall is delivered in this area third branch which is very important crosses over the saurashtra region and goes on to meet the incoming west bengal branch in northwest india so these are the three branches now why this area where so, uh, this third branch is moving is dry because of a very obvious natural reason that aravalis lies parallel to this branch so there is no obstruction no orographic effect so no rainfall fine 
only some extreme conditions like cyclonic depression in arabian sea which create a situation where this region uh, receives abruptly high amount of rainfall in very small time okay now take up the second branch that is bay of bengal branch you all know that arakan mountains in the myanmar deflect them towards bangladesh and india and low pressure here kind of results into moving of this branch through the gangetic plain towards the northwest where they meet this arabian branch a second branch which moves towards the northeast region now here you know that in southern part that is meghalaya there is series of mountain chain namely garo khasi jaintia and on the upper side there are abor mishmi mikir and other different hills now this structure kind of creates a funnel effect this monsoon wind gets into this funnel and results into very heavy rainfall at some places the average rainfall is more than 1000 cm now you know that why the areas which are having high rainfall owe their uh, this uh, uh, this phenomena due to their physiological or physical feature because of presence of mountains now you clearly know that rainfall decreases for the uh, from when we compare the eastern part of india to the western part of india because for rainfall the clouds uh, there should be a continuous mo moisture supply and moving towards west this moisture supply reduces gradually and finally whatever is remaining we in uh, western india gets the rainfall and this particular area that is western rajasthan becomes area of inadequate rainfall so this we talked about the spatial variation and reason for such variation now another important point that you should keep in mind that tamil nadu coast remain dry during southwest monsoon monsoon because of two reason first is first is it is parallel it is parallel to the uh, bay of bengal branch and secondly if you can see in the map it lies in the rain shadow zone of the first branch of the arabian sea due to these two factors lying parallel to the west bengal uh, bay of bengal branch and lying in the rain shadow zone tamil nadu does not receive required uh, amount of rainfall during southwest monsoon but it receives rainfall with the retreating monsoon when this area comes under the influence of onshore trade winds with the apparent movement of itcz downward so in winters the tamil nadu coast or the koromandal coast receives the rainfall due to apparent movement of sun and retreating monsoon so this is uh, this all we talked about the distribution of rainfall so how this distribution is impacting the indian society this is what is important from the perspective of upsc examination so first as you all know that india is an is an agrarian economy more than 50% of population is, is still employed in this sector and this sector contributes around 17 to 20% into the gdp now another important factor that is 60 more than 60% of net sown area in india is dependent on the rainfall so for the uh, for the amount of population that is dependent 
and the area that is dependent on the rainfall a good amount of rainfall is very much prerequisite of a sustainable or healthy agricultural production now with the with this healthy agricultural production the purchasing power uh, per, per, purchasing power of the consumers will increase or will be improved now this will put an uptick mark on the economy or the mood of the economy altogether and that is why the term that monsoon is the real finance minister of the india if monsoon is well everything is well if monsoon gets disrupted everything will be disrupted at least when matter is related to india and indian economy okay so further as you know that monsoon plays and its uh, spatial distribution plays a very important part in ecology in two aspect first that is distribution of flora and fauna now you know that bio um, uh, biodiversity hot spot hot spots that we have in india are in western ghats and northeastern india now you, you have seen that high rainfall has given rise to tropical equatorial forest evergreen equatorial forest in these areas and these uh, forest boast a good amount of biodiversity in terms of endemic species as well as in terms of sheer number of species so yes it plays a very big role in the flora as well as fauna you you might have read about the tropical deciduous forest tropical dry deciduous forest now the distinction between deciduous forest and dry deciduous forest lies in the their shedding of uh, leaf and which is impact of the rainfall amount of rainfall they receive fine secondly monsoon plays an important role in ecological conservation also because more than 58% of the ground water recharge is directly dependent upon the monsoon and rainfall so it is pretty much important from uh, the perspective of sustainability of ground water as well as the flowing rivers the discharge in the rivers as you have heard that uh, the uh, the rivers in peninsular india are mostly dependent upon the monsoonal rainfall so it is very important from the perspective of the uh, from the perspective of ecology also now if you can recall the question in upsc was asked about the cultural influence of monsoon in bhojpur region now just think about it your dietary habit your cropping pattern why why you will find rice uh, as a predominant staple diet in tamil nadu and why wheat is the prominent staple diet or uh, staple diet in the punjab and haryana region because of the monsoon and yes temperature plays a very important role but but as you know that uh, apart from himalaya india is not having the prerequisite that is the temperate kind of temperature for weeds to grow and if you can connect it that the we uh, while when we were discussing the russia ukraine war we talked about the grain basket so they are the uh, kind of they have the natural environment to grow the wheat the uh, required amount of uh, the prerequisite amount of temperature they have so that is why we sow wheat in winters and monsoon the pattern of monsoon plays a very important part in it the sowing the harvesting every cycle is dependent upon the monsoon choice of crop is dependent upon the monsoon so is true with our dietary habit fine 
so is true with our clothing habit we prefer light clothes cotton clothes because uh, during monsoon season the the weather becomes quite humid so in order to have the uh, comfort during work uh, in fields or uh, in cities people prefer light clothes so it it uh, affect it impacts or it influences our clothing pattern also further if you will look if you will, if you have heard about the uh, rag rag malhar this monsoon is affecting the uh, literature and art since ages many poems books and uh, rags are framed by keeping monsoon and its pattern in mind i gave you one example ragmalhar what about meghdoot the book written by kalidas further if you will look deeper the uh, you may say festivals like tej or onam in southern state of kerala they are in sync with the monsoonal pattern of india so all these are the cultural influence of the monsoon so it is not just limited to the agriculture or economy or the ecology it impacts our culture and now comes the article article talks about the variability now understand this with this example now suppose an area which is receiving 200 cm of rainfall and it uh, faced a deficit of around 10 cm which makes it 190 cm if you will calculate percentage it would be 5% deficit now suppose the same thing happens in this western rajasthan area now already low rainfall 50 cm now 10 cm deficit that is 40 cm but now the variability is much higher that is 20% variability this variability can be on the positive side as well as on the negative side but you can see the impact that areas which are receiving high amount of rainfall this much variability is not cause of worry but for areas which have low level of rainfall same amount of variability is magnified just just think about it these uh, these impacts that monsoon has accustomed us we have made our lifestyle based on the cycle of monsoon and such variabilities and such disruptions can cause havoc and i am not talking about the extreme events which author has also pointed out author has pointed out that areas which were supposed to have low rainfall have received 100% of their quota but areas like western ghats and northeastern india which were supposed to have high level of rainfall faced deficit ranging from 20 to 35% and highest was in kerala there was 35% deficit in kerala this year so this makes monsoon monsoon predict uh, prediction was always uh, tough and monsoonal pattern in india was always irritating now such patterns such extreme phenomena have made it even more erratic so it is going to impact because the average we have taken why we termed it as a normal monsoon because we took uh, entire country as a whole and we took a long time average so it seems normal but if you will look deeper there are regional variations and areas of good rainfall are badly impacted this time so this is what the concern that author has raised and he has suggested some measures about it uh, that he says uh, not say measures he says that uh, it is not just problem of climate change it is due to the multiple events like el nino la nina uh, presence of el nino this year and uh, role of uh, tibetan plateau 
and other like Indian Ocean Dipole, you can attribute it to the multiple phenomena. But what is important, what is the, what should be the way forward is the mitigation, the climate action program or the mitigation of this global warming is a long term process. So what is important now because all these happenings are occurring right now. So answer lies in the disaster preparedness. Countries must invest into the disaster resilient infrastructure. They must look into the loopholes like the construction in uh, hilly areas, uh, like illegal constructions. So disaster preparedness is the answer in short term, uh, if you will look at it in a short term perspective. Because that can mitigate the troubles like cloud burst in mega cities, in hilly areas. Uh, recently, we talked about glacial lake outburst. All these events can be mitigated through disaster preparedness. And climate mitigation is the ultimate solution, but which is, uh, according to author, is a long term goal. That's bring us to the second topic of discussion today. That is the uh, every drop counts. Now, UN report on groundwater extraction has highlighted some very concerning data. It says that uh, out of 30, uh, 31 aquifers that it, uh, it considered for the reading or study, 27 were over exploited. It further found that most of the over exploitation happened in the green revolution belt. This, this study also found that 95% of exploitation or over extraction has been used in the agri field of agriculture only. So if you will trace with your syllabus, again key natural resources and geophysical phenomena is very important from the perspective of UPSC examination and if you will refer, refer to the previous year question, question says the ideal solution of depleting groundwater resources in India is water harvesting system. How can it be made effective in urban areas? So here in this discussion we will be covering various aspects of groundwater. So we will cover uh, the impact of over extraction or you may say unjudicious use, government policies to mitigate uh, such ill effects of groundwater depletion and we will look into why there is still challenge in mitigating the ill effects of groundwater depletion and we will also, we will end this discussion by providing a brief way forward. But before moving any further, let us understand what is groundwater? Now, if you will consider the first layer as a topsoil, this is an water percolates through it, and bottom layer, which is impervious is in nature. So, water cannot go beyond this layer. So, groundwater is not something like a lake below the, below the surface uh, that you are looking at. It is just that between these two, there are sedimentary rocks forming a kind of a structure with the pores and this percolated water gets deposited in these pores. And this is what we term as groundwater. So, whenever you will try to pump this water, you all, all you have to do is to dig a pipe, create a pressure, vacuum pressure and water will come out. So, this is what the basic concept of groundwater is. Now, why? 
uh, what are the impact of high uh, extraction first is it depletes the water table now suppose the ground water table between the two layers lies at this level now simply over extraction will deplete this top layer this level so you have to dig deeper to access this ground water and this relates to the third point that is agriculturists or farmers are founding it costly affair because they have to uh, employ uh, the powerful pumps and they have to bore to a de deeper level to get access to this ground water and this is pretty much evident in the northern state in the green revolution state specifically and this problem has been reported at very high level from the agri uh, farmers of maharashtra that they are incurring the higher extraction cost for boring as well as for bringing powerful pumps further when this ground water goes down it also res results into the concentration of contaminants like fluoride and arsenic and this is very true in the area or the fields of again green revolution belt punjab haryana and western up these uh, you may say harmful uh, contaminants like arsenic and fluoride have contaminated the ground water altogether which we, we will use further for the irrigation and drinking purposes so it is directly and indirectly going into our system our digestive system thirdly a very important report came in the year 2016 that is mihir shah committee report it says that india has a little or practically no study or knowledge about the interlinkages between the flowing water of river and ground water in the catchment area and after uh, around 8 uh, years this mihir shah committee's reports after around 8 years of this report we are finding that in the state of karnataka the run of water of the rivers have depleted as a consequence of the depleting ground water tables in the vicinity or the catchment area of the river altogether and this has led to further confrontation between the riparian states reason one of the major reason is the depleting ground water levels now another impact is land subsistence and this has been reported from the cities like chennai if you know that foundation is an important part of any house now foundation when ground water depletes it it leaves behind a loosen or you may say a weak soil base and this results into the subsist, uh, subsistence of the structure altogether it poses a threat to the infrastructure and this has been uh, this is being witnessed in the city of chennai and having talked about chennai in addition to the chennai gujarat is also witnessing the same problem that is intrusion of salt water into the main water bodies earlier it was a case study of chennai now even state of gujarat is witnessing the intrusion of salt water into the main uh, water bodies because water uh, the water table has depleted and it has given a scope of seeping of uh, salt water into the main water bodies in the country now government of india has been implementing various programs which are structured and focusing on the various aspects of community participation uh, and uh, um, artificial recharging of ground water table and these policy uh, intervention include the national water policy of 2012 uh, which is uh, very 
successful in the state of uh, Tamil Nadu. Apart from this, the Jal Shakti Abhiyan, which focuses on the community participation and uh, it has shown very good results in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, it is method of uh, recharging the groundwater uh, levels by sustainable means. Then there is master plan for artificial recharge, which is pretty much successful in the state of Rajasthan. There is a dedicated component of uh, watershed development under the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Shichai Yojana, uh, which has been successful in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Where watershed management has been uh, used on uh, on form basis uh, various methods of irrigation and uh, groundwater res uh, restoration has been taken up further the atal bhujal yojana is also uh, has a, a very important focus on the groundwater recharge and some promising results has been uh, witnessed in the state of uttar pradesh now problem with these schemes are you can see they have a very uh, limited regional reach they are limited, the good examples or the success stories of these schemes are limited to few states only. While we need to spread them uh, to a larger scale, their implementation and uh, their execution should be, spread, um, should be uh, taken up to the various states of India which are facing the groundwater depletion problems. So, these are the schemes and we uh, these were the schemes and we know that uh, due to their uh, regional approach or uh, limiting uh, approach uh, there is a possibility to expand them and to utilize them in a proper manner but there are some other constraints also let us take them one by one which are causing further groundwater depletion in india first is as you discussed in the previous topic erratic monsoon the variability of monsoon and low irrigation coverage. Now, here you can take up example of Jharkhand state, which is almost entirely dependent upon the rainfall. And due to the erratic rainfall in recent years, the groundwater extraction has intensified because there is no other mean to manage the irrigation of the agricultural fields. Further, cities like Bangalore, Pune, there is a rapid expansion of these urban areas. And with the expansion comes the demand. Demand rises and in absence of any uh, natural water body resources, what, uh, uh, what is being extracted is the groundwater. Fine. Now, there are states like Bihar where there is an, uh, you may say, leave alone the application or execution of regula regulation, there is no appropriate regulation altogether. That leaves farmers on their own will to extract as much as they want. And this is further causing groundwater depletion. Now those who are having this regulation policies and all have another uh, phenomena which we can uh, we say that indiscriminate or you may say uh, poor agricultural policies you might have heard about uh, loan waiver electricity bill waiver electricity bill subsidy okay now high msp for paddy crop now uh, good market for the cash crop now all these things are uh, further motivating the farmers to take up the groundwater uh, extraction even more because they know that their electricity bill will be waived off uh, they will get good price on their uh, paddy crop so areas which you have seen that mm, they, uh, they fall under the area of low rainfall like the Punjab Haryana they are growing paddy so where the water is coming from required for paddy it is coming from over exploitation of groundwater and the electricity that has been consumed the bill is waived off so there is no disincentive to 
to uh, to exploit rather it is an incentive to earn more further there are some topographical issues in a state like maharashtra telangana andhra pradesh where the topography itself uh, does not allow the recharge of the water table the layers are uh, impervious you may say so recharging once the level is de has declined recharging that level takes a lot of time and effort so what is the solution solution lies in the gathering of ground water data as has been done in the state of gujarat because for any policy matter for any action you need to have a sustainable or uh, full proof data further there is a need of on farm water management technique use drip irrigation micro irrigation to save water and to recharge the aquifers okay now states like karnataka and maharashtra are contemplating to utilize the collaborative effort with the uh, central government so that technical expertise can uh, and funding can come from the center and uh, these state can formulate their policy and execute it in a prudent manner as per the requirement of their local needs so this can be a very good suggestion uh, that put the water in the concurrent list and there should be a collaborative effort between the state and center now as you have seen there is a component of government policy where artificial recharge techniques like water harvesting making johar etc are very successful in the state of maharashtra and bundelkhand in uttar pradesh so you can uh, utilize this or replicate this in the larger area further which is the most important thing and has been done in the state of kerala is empower the regulatory body altogether empower them with the functions and empower them with laws and regulations so that they can execute their regulatory duty so that's all for this discussion let us move to the last discussion of today's session uh, which is based on the this news which featured on page number 17 of indian express newspaper now the news is about the india's uh, oil import and uh, recent data shows that since uh, last 6 month russia had been the top uh, destination for our oil import now russia the share of russia has dipped slightly and uh, uh, saudi arabia is regaining its spot while the overall percentage of oil that we imported has rise uh, has uh, witnessed a rise of around 8% so if you will look into your syllabus the indian economy and issues related to planning and mobilization of resources is very important as these uh, import and export uh, have a huge impact on our exchequer and if we will talk about uh, this oil import it has a huge dent on our uh, exchequer altogether further the infrastructure sector that is energy is also mentioned if you will look into the previous year upsc question question based on india's energy security has been asked in the year 2017 as well as 2018 fine so what we are going to cover in this discussion is uh, what is energy security why we need it and what is india's Uh, approach or india's strategy to achieve this energy security now before moving any further just uh, understand the term energy security quickly and uh, so that we can take up the india's strategy um, uh, in a in a detail manner so energy security is nothing it can be defined as the uninterrupted the first keyword availability of energy sources at an affordable price so it should be uninterrupted and it should be affordable and as you all know it includes oil minerals whatever is the fuel component gases 
everything that is required for economic development and economic sustaining the economic activity of the country. Now, International Energy Agency includes uh, or segregates this, uh, this term into two parts. First is long-term energy security, as the name suggests. It includes or focuses on the long-term policy intervention or the investment in policy which focuses on the uninterrupted supply which is in line with the economic and environmental aspiration or you may say ecological aspiration of the country. So, a long-term security means the investment in long-term policy matters. While short term energy security focuses on uh, methods or the steps that have been taken to address some abrupt occurring or uh, you may say abrupt uh, uh, hurdle in the supply line altogether. Okay, so it segregates the uh, this energy security into two terms that is long term and short term. Now, first and foremost question is why do we need energy security? Okay, so the basic answer is to continue uh, the economic growth, continue with the economic growth or sustainability of the country's economy. Uh, but if you will think uh, um, in relation with the recent data, we are fifth largest economy in the world and we are poised to replace uh, Japan by 2030 and uh, estimate says that we are going to be a 7 trillion dollar economy and will be placed at uh, third place. So, for everything, for everything to achieve this level of economic development which is in line with the aspiration that we as an Indian have, energy security is a must you must have a secure plank so that you can take a jump start. You must have that security, you must have those reserves, you must have the, those uninterrupted supply. Secondly, you must have them at an affordable rate, otherwise a huge chunk will, uh, will just uh, go away to the foreign countries, isn't it? So, to support the economic growth, to, you know, to achieve this target of 7 trillion dollar economy, we must have energy security. That is the first reason. Secondly, we have planned to uh, achieve 50 percent of the share of uh, energy production in India through renewable sources or non-fossil fuel sources. Okay. So, where, uh, where they will come from? You must have a strategy or you must have a, that we discuss a long term energy security planning or vision so that you can shift to that because uh, in terms of energy uh, resources like oil, gas, India is not that rich in terms of natural resources and coal is not the solution. So, in order to shift in order to have that uh, sustainable plan to trans for transition, you must have a backup plan. You must have backing of energy security. Okay, we have this much uh, fuel, we, we, we have this much gas, we have this source, we have uninterrupted supply. And again comes that it should not be detrimental or a, a dent to our exchequer. So, these are the two major reasons which. Uh, ask us to have energy security and for that reason India has came up with a four-pronged strategy, four-pronged strategy in which it has taken up four major steps to secure this energy security. First is the diversification of energy supplies. Now, just refer to this data by 2012 to 13. India was importing its uh, crude oil needs or the, uh, the energy needs from 27 countries. Now, in 2022, India 
is importing from around 39 countries. It has established this trade relation with countries like Russia, Libya, Cambodia, uh, sorry, Colombia. Okay, so these countries were added to the basket of India. Now they are diversifying the energy supplies. Fine. Further, in this diversification, as you know that it is dependent for the 85% of its crude oil import. So, India uh, in 2000, um, few years back, uh, like in <clears throat> 2013-14, it was uh, taking up the ethanol blending just 1.5% of the ethanol blending. Now, this has raised to a level of 10% blending. And now India is targeting that by 2030, it will increase this with 20% blending. Now, they are diversifying. On one hand, they are adding more countries to their uh, uh, bucket list for purchasing or importing. That is, that access and uh, the supply line will be maintained in case of any uh, disruption on any one country. Further, they are diversifying their option. They are blending the petrols with ethanol. So, dependency on import will come down eventually, okay, to some extent. Secondly, they are increasing exploration and production at home. If you can refer the help. The hydro, hydrocarbon exploration license uh, policy. Now, this is based on the revenue sharing contract. And it aims to attract companies to explore and produce in India. Because the target is to reduce the dependency of hydrocarbon import by 10%. Okay, so on one hand, on external side, they are, they are taking up steps. Internal side, they are taking up steps to raise the exploration, to raise the exploration and production. Further, as we discussed that we have a target of 50% uh, energy from the non, uh, non fossil fuel resources. Now, in this field, we have achieved a remarkable feat. In just a period of 8.5 years, we have seen 396% growth in the installed capacity of uh, electricity from renewable sources. And it stands at 40 3% of the total installed capacity of India as of 2023. So, here we are finding the alternative, uh, alternative source of energy also. Lastly, as you know, India is planning towards moving to a gas-based economy. And it is planning that gas-based economy should be having a 15% share in total energy market. That 15% fuel that are being used should be based on gas. And for this, several, more than 30 companies have been roped in and uh, they are making uh, networks through station, service station in uh, various parts of the countries. Further, green hydrogen with zero carbon footprint and we are terming it as a uh, fuel of the future. Now, national green hydrogen through national green hydrogen policy, government is going to inject around 20,000 crore rupees to convert India into a green hydrogen hub. And lastly, but most importantly, India is investing heavily on transition towards electric vehicles. You all know about the famous scheme. You all know 
about how GST on electric vehicle has been reduced from 18% to 5% and so is true for the charging station. So, so government of India is pushing heavily towards use of electric vehicles and it is uh, putting all its effort to make it uh, make India a manufacturing hub for the electric vehicle and its component. So that was related to the in India's uh, four-step strategy and that will conclude our discussion. Uh, that is all for today's session. Stay tuned for more such updates. Thank you.